मेरा नाम श्याम है श्याम सुनार मैं मराठी महानगर पेपर में काम करता हूँ पत्रकार हूँ आपकी बातों से मतलब आ, मेरे पास शब्द नहीं है क्या बोलना लेकिन ये मुझे लगता है कि भारत में हिंदू और मुस्लिम एक होने के लिए कुछ ना कुछ होना चाहिए ऐसा मुझे लगता है मैं करता आया हूँ दस बारह साल से लेकिन आपके मुँह से मैं ये सुनना चाहता हूँ कि भारत में बस्ती में मैं तो चालीस गांव इस गांव में रहता था मुंबई में रेजोरेटी के लिए आया हूँ बस्ती बस्ती में जो हिंदू और मुस्लिम हैं इनके दिल में अगर गलत फहमी है और वो है भी सही मायने में कुछ हद तक है तो वो दूर करने के लिए आपकी क्या सुझाव है कि हिंदू और मुस्लिम दोनों कम्युनिटी के लोग कैसे इकट्ठे आ सकते हैं ब्रदर आस वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन दैट वॉट इज द सजेशन फ्रॉम मी दैट हाउ कैन वी गेट द हिंदूज एंड मुस्लिम ऑन अ कॉमन प्लेटफॉर्म हाउ कैन वी कम टूगेदर the reply to this is i have given a talk on similarities between hinduism and islam i have given the talk in bombay i have given the talk in chennai i have given in other parts of india and we find there that tens of thousands have attended in bombay about 20000 in chennai a similar number and other parts of india and many non muslims have attended many hindus have attended thousands of them and many of them told me that brother zakir there was a person just a comment that what i did not know about hinduism in the past 40 years of my life i have learned in the past four hours i follow the guidance of the quran of surah al imran chapter 3 verse 64 which says tala wila kalmatin sawa imran bainakum come to come in terms as me us and you which is the first term allah na ilaha illallah that we worship none but one god what we realize that i don't believe in interfaith dialogue we say that hinduism is the same islam is the same christianity is the same this is just a gimmick if i ask the hindu pandit will you become a muslim he'll say no if i ask the muslim will you become a christian he'll say no if i ask the priest will you become a hindu he'll say no so what is same it's not same we have to agree that there are differences but there are similarities also let us agree at least to follow the commonalities what is different keep it aside so what i say that take all the religious scriptures whether it be the bhagavad gita whether it be the veda the upanishad the bible the quran at least what is common what is different keep it aside we can discuss some other time but at least what is common let us agree to follow it and i've given the talk and i've showed so many similarities so many so you can refer to my video cassette and what happens many of them are not aware the muslim are not aware of their religion similarly the hindu are not aware of their religion many of the muslim objected similarities between islam and hinduism impossible so many of the people came in the talk to attack the rabi am bullying what nonsense hindu and muslim same ho hi nahi sakta hai. but when they heard the talk they were shocked those who came to attack they agreed with the talk similarly many hindus came So what we realize that what is common we should follow, and number one is Allah na abu ta'ala that we worship none but one God. That's the most common thing, and which you can give quotations, and we can give quotation from the Vedas, from the Bhagavad Gita. It is mentioned in the Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number six, section number two, verse number one. Ek kam evidityam, God is only one without a second. It's mentioned in the Shweta Shitar Upanishad, chapter number six, verse number nine. Na chasse kasi janita na chadipa. Of him there are no lord. He has got no parents. These are Sanskrit quotations. That means Almighty God has got no parents. He has got no lord. Furthermore, if we analyze. It is mentioned in the Shweta Shitar Upanishad, chapter number four, verse number nineteen. Na chasse pati masti. Of that God there are no images. There is no pratima. There is no photograph. There is no idol. There is no image. Same thing in the Ayurved, chapter number thirty-two, verse number three. Na tasse pati masti. Of that God, there are no images. So if you go back to your Vedas and your religious scriptures, it speaks about one God. So people many a times are not aware of the scriptures. And when the question just a couple of days back, I had given an interview to Star News. They asked me, Brother Zakir, what is your view regarding Vande Mataram? Can the Muslims say or not? I said, "What do the Muslims say? I'll come to it afterwards. I'll first tell you what the Hindu scriptures say." <laughs> He was shocked. What do I mean by that? I said, "If anyone is a scholar of the Veda, the Veda agrees that God has got no pratima. So when you say Vande Mataram, that this country is my mother, and you call it God, a person who is a scholar, I am not talking about the normal people who don't know." about the scriptures but you ask a scholar he will say that vande mataram goes against the vedas because vande mataram in no less than three places it says i bow down to thee i worship thee 
if you see about the Arya Samaj and you see the various top scholars, they think according to the Vedas, idol worship is not permitted. There are verses in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 7, verse number 20, which says that you should not do idol worship. So here, when we go back to your scriptures, unfortunately, they believe in a form of pantheism. So even according to the Vedas, if you're a good scholar, this song, Vande Mataram, that I bow down and I worship thee, as I quoted in Sanskrit about Upanishad, it's against. Even in Islam, there are 12 lines which are objectionable. Three times it is said, Vande Mataram, which means I bow down to thee. If once it says that this country is my mother, once it says I will kiss the feet, once it says about the divine things, about the smile, talking about divinity, it calls it Lakshmi, it is called Durga, all these things are objectionable. We Muslims, we love this country, but we will not bow down to anyone but to Almighty God. <laughs> even a mother, even a mother who has born in a womb for nine months, we love her, we respect her, but we will not bow down to our mother, to our own mother. <laughs> the number one human being who we love and respect in the world after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will even not bow down to our prophet, prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Is it required that we should sing this song, Mande Mataram? It is a political gimmick. Politicians, they thought they'd get the vote bank. They even made a gimmick on the date. You know, when it was written by Bankin Chand Chattopadhyay in 1876, it was published in 1882. So where is century come now? And where is 7th September? They made a mistake, the politician, political gimmick. <laughs> Furthermore, even a Muslim living in Saudi Arabia, he cannot bow down to his country, Saudi Arabia. Even a Muslim living in Pakistan cannot bow down to Pakistan. It is shirk. So to say that the Indian Muslims are not patriotic, it is our religion. Our creator, our God who has made this country is far superior. So we love this country. When required for the truth, we are willing to die for this country. But we will not bow down to anyone but Almighty God. <laughs>